but I call the viewers neighbors. So if you hear me call, saying neighbors, it's just the viewers. Everybody needs good neighbors. Hi, neighbors. Welcome back to Stories Next Door. And I'm your host, JC Joyce. Today, I have the pleasure of hosting uh, one of the biggest artists in Africa. Many of you might know him from the legendary boy band group, Saudi Soul, where they sold millions of copies worldwide, toured the world, blesses with their vocals. He's a powerhouse, won numerous awards both locally and internationally, and he has ventured onto a solo career. He has hits. One of my favorite hits is Nobody because he's featuring Darasa, a fellow Tanzanian. <laughs> so I love that. Bien, karibu to the podcast. <laughs> Before we begin, right? So I was leaving my house today and I said, let me go and grab my glasses, Kwanzaa, kwa sababu. Mm -hmm. I want to be one of the cool kids. Hey, man. Looking, looking cute. Looking cute. also going to podcast. So just... Just tell us what what's the most important thing that people need to know about you before before we begin. The most important thing people need to know about me yeah. is that uh, I'm willing to do this music thing, mm -hmm. whether it's successful or not. Okay. I don't care. It's the only thing I love to do in the world, mm -hmm. and it's the only thing I'm ever going to do. So it's the passion behind it. Yeah. And you've been doing it for quite a long time. All my life. Yes. So where did the influence begin? Where did it all start? Yeah, it started as a, as a, as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was, I think, five years old, my cousin Sophie mm -hmm. asked me what I want to be when I grow up. And I told her, man, I want to be a singer. I want to be a superstar. And she burst out laughing. And all of my cousins burst out laughing because we were like at a family gathering. Mm -hmm. And I was always dancing, singing, and all that stuff yes. from very young. And my father's extensive music collection inspired me to just dig deeper and sing. I went to church a lot. I sang in church. I sang everywhere. You were in the choir? Yeah. Ah, yeah. But I just uh -huh. knew from a very early age that I love music and yeah. I want to pursue music as a career. Okay. Now, nah, obviously, and with Saudi Soul, because you guys were together for over <laughs> two decades. Like, two. you know, you were together for quite a long... 22 years. 22 years. Yeah. That's a kid growing up, going to university now. Exactly. At this point. Yeah. So, the solo career, was it something that you always wanted to do? I was or always did it just curious. come out of it yeah. when um, the band decided to go separate ways? Uh, I was always curious on how I would look as a solo act. Yeah. Because uh, being in a band, you never really have autonomy to make all the decisions. Mm -hmm. And rightfully so, it's a democracy. Yeah. But for me, I just always wondered, is it, um, who am I as a solo artist? What is my message to the world as mm -hmm. a solo artist? And I did know that at some point of my career, I would have to explore that option. Yeah. And people get jobs. A long time ago, your, your parents would work in the same company. Mm -hmm. For fifty years, for thirty yeah. years. Yeah, no, it is. And until today, exactly. Like, yeah. You know, you and and I always say in our generation, mm -hmm. you can't work in the same job for twenty two yeah, years. You can't. Yeah, you need to shift, switch it up a little bit. You Definitely. know, do something different, do yeah. something new. So this is me in my new job mm -hmm. as a solo artist. Yeah, and I'm loving it. And has the creative process been slightly different because now it's you and your uh, paper and pen? Definitely. It's 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 slightly different. It's very different. Yeah. Yeah. It's me arranging the music. It's me putting the elements that I like. Mm -hmm. uh, it's me writing music that's personal to me. Mm -hmm. You know, because in a band, you just have to make it very general, mm -hmm. and that's the magic of it as well, because mm -hmm. it appeals to a lot of people. But also, when you dig deep within yourself and you make it personal, it, it still appeals to a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. Ah. So. Definitely. You said, um, you know, it's something that's personal to you. There's a song called um, A Student, mm. okay, which is one, one, <laughs> a really big hit. The chorus in Asema have a moment of silence. Mm. Let's have a moment of silence a, for the A, a student. student. Uh -huh. well, for, for the B student. student. What was the mindset? Student. What was the mindset when you were writing this chorus? Because I listened to it and I said, ah, 
So watu kunje wanatesa na mabenz kumbe ni ma e student. Mm, e class. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> the e class. It's just my relationship first of all with education. Mm-hmm. Uh growing up a lot of moments in my education I was deemed as stubborn. Mm-hmm. Uh I was deemed as unserious. And all of these things were because I was an artist, artistic child. Yeah. And the system just never understood mm-hmm. who I was. Regardless of the grade I got in high school. Yeah. I was still going to sing, I was still going to do music. And my calling was bigger than the education I got. And how do you decide the themes for the songs because you have multiple th- themes mm-hmm. within um the new album, right? So how does that creative process come about? I like to write music about myself mm-hmm. and people. Mm-hmm. Every song in my album is about somebody. Mm-hmm. Is about someone someone's ex- someone's life experience yeah. or my life experience. Yeah. And some things come to me in my sleep. Some come to me in the studio. So when you, when it's in your sleep you wake up you write the verse and you go to sleep. Yo, you know so many times I wake <laughs> up in the middle of the night and I record a melody mm-hmm. that I had a dream about and I go back to sleep. Often when I wake up in the morning to listen to the melody it's just me going like yeah but sometimes there's some magic in there yeah so what are we doing in london uh i'm here to pay dowry for my wife okay oh. and i'm, ki- <laughs> I'm <Okay>. kidding <laughs> i'm kidding no what are we doing in london we are mm-hmm. here because uh on friday the 1st of november mm-hmm. we have sold out the coco oh we are there yeah We are going to come uh, and celebrate. Is it Arena? Oh, oh. We, we sold out the Coco. Mm-hmm. It's a very prestigious venue. I think I'm the first East African act to play there. Ever? Yes. Ever. Yeah. To sell it out. Mhm. Yeah, uh, I'm doing it with great pride. Mm. I'm representing a lot of people. Yeah. My community is huge. And it's also a feather on my cap because it's my first big solo show in London. Mhm. I've been here with Saudi Soul. We played the O2 before. Uh, yes, I, yeah. I was there. But, ah. But these are just mm-hmm. you know beautiful moments because I didn't expect it to happen this fast. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Because you had a show um early this year. Yes, at the Jazz Cafe. Yeah, at the Jazz Cafe, which was also sold out. Beautiful moment. Your stage performance was incredible. Oh, thank you. Loves to see that. And now you sold out Coco. Yeah. What's the capacity? I think 2000 Wow. Yeah. It's that, three times it's three yes. times the Jazz Cafe what I did last time. You're doing incredible things, Ben. And uh, also right now we've we've sold it out and we do have a long waiting list of people still wanting to buy tickets. Mm-hmm. And my tour uh, manager, the tour company was yeah. telling me, "Why well, if you if you just sell if you just open it up to a, a few more tickets, you can't do the O2 again." Yeah. Of yeah. Yeah, but And uh, we'd love to see that. And I would love to see it too. Yeah. So, I yeah. know a few people who have missed out on the tickets. I know. That's they're, they're in my DM, <laughs> they're in my phone, they're in my phone. They want to kill me, man. So how has um touring internationally impacted you as a person and as an artist because mm-hmm. in locally in Kenya it's different, yes. I bet. And now you're doing these things internationally. How has that impacted your life in any way? Or your music yeah. career that is? It definitely has made my expression very global. Mhm. Because uh, you know, in Swahili they say, "Monamke asipotembea atolewa na jirani." Yeah, huh? Anyone who's not understanding it, it says, "When a woman doesn't walk mm-hmm. around or you know travel, yeah. mm-hmm. she marries her neighbor." Mm-hmm. And for me to be able to make art for a global audience, I need to tour. Yeah, and it just opens up my mind. I meet amazing people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I meet. amazing producers songwriters yeah. people who are in the arts and who elevate my art yeah. as i said also i write stories about people yeah so my expression is global in the sense that it's people i meet globally not just in my neighborhood mm-hmm. yeah. i was talking about a few i was talking to a few friends recently about the power of networking mm. and the pa- networking can just open those door for you that you had no idea It's the true. doors existed you know it introduces you to rooms that first of all you have you have why are you even in this room but you're there mm. so it's a thing it is when well, i think about how me and you met especially yes it's yeah. through networking through networking yeah so it's uh you know it's opened so many doors do you have any memorable moments that um you can share throughout the tours that you've done because every night yeah. is a memorable when you're performing i know but they're so memorable 
yeah. I think the most memorable for me is the learnings of mm-hmm. learning how to build things from scratch. Mm-hmm. Um, with Saudi Soul, we were extremely successful. Yeah. By the time we like walked away from it, or took a break. And let me not say walked away. Yeah. By the time we took a break. And are we expecting a reunion? We were, ah. Of course, there's money in a reunion. Why would, why, would, why not? Yeah, definitely yeah. expecting a reunion. Uh-huh. But by the time we were taking the break, we had broken mm-hmm. Europe in a beautiful way. We were packing venues across the continent of Europe and America. Yeah. And that was always a dream for us. And when I did my first solo tour early in the year, yeah. I had to start from scratch. So I started in Europe, yes. Yeah. But I started doing 200 cup venues, mm-hmm. and those are things that Saudi Soul somewhere. did many years ago. Yeah, how so did how did you feel though? I had to have the humility to start afresh. Yeah, some nights were harder than others, mm-hmm. but when I look back, I needed that. Yeah, yeah, and it's just a lesson to anybody who is in the music business to have the humility to start afresh, mm-hmm. to have the and not even the music business in life. Yeah, in anything in life. Yeah, you yeah. must have the humility to start mm-hmm. again. And you did have some wins back there, but that's the past. Mm -hmm. If your future requires you to do things like starting afresh, Mm -hmm. then do it. And would you say the people that you've met and the cultures that you've experienced, the foods, for instance, Mm -hmm. first of all, how do you find the food? Okay, because the food is definitely different. The food depends where I am. Yeah. Yeah. If if I'm in East Africa, I love the food. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm in Nigeria, I. In Nigeria, I'm loving the food slowly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm getting into the food. I love Nigerian food. It's just a bit yeah. spicy. It's very spicy. <laughs> Not a bit. It's very spicy. But I'm I'm definitely growing into Nigerian food. My wife is Nigerian, so yes. she's been throwing in small bits of chili mm-hmm. in my tea. Ah, uh, have you been doing this? <laughs> Nigerians are putting chili in everything. But anyway, and uh, it's just been one of those things that in every place I go, mm-hmm. the food speaks to the characters and energy of the people. Mm -hmm. So I like to try also local cuisine. There's nothing to try in England though, except other uh, Uh, cuisine from other, like other uh, other communities. Sunday roast, our English breakfast. Yeah, I did do a Sunday roast. My wife does a Sunday roast at home. Okay, okay, that's uh, good. Often, by the way. Yeah. No, we love a Sunday roast. I like a Sunday roast because it brings the family together. Yes. Not necessarily how it tastes though. Ah. Because shots fired. Yeah, because <laughs> chicken is chicken. Roast potatoes are roast potatoes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we get that. All right, that's that's good. Um, so talking about um travels, right? Mm-hmm. So now you're doing a show in in London. Then where are you off to next? So uh, I finished London. Yeah. On the next day, uh-huh. I'm in a flight to Finland. Ah. Uh huh. And I do Finland and then I'm going to Paris next week because I'm going to record, um, I'm, I'm recording my next album. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of the music in the album is from, also I didn't say that I record a lot when I'm on the road. Yeah. And that also brings out a lot of good vibes because I meet producers from mm-hmm. a melange yeah. of places. And uh, I'm going to Paris to record. After Paris, I'm playing Oslo. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to come back to London to record for a couple of days. Yeah. Then I have to rush to Kenya because I'm uh, I'm going for a show in Tanzania. Yeah, oh. uh, homeland. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I'm, I'm playing with I'm playing a show with Sean Paul in oh, Dar es Salaam. That's good. This wow. Month. Yeah, wow. man. Love I that. can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to finish my set and watch and watch Sean Paul. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. it's really good. Love that. Honestly, so for uh, artists, a local artist right now. Um, listening to this who mm. hasn't ventured to the international markets right and they're thinking it's hard to obviously do it it's mm-hmm. been done but obviously because they don't have that knowledge of mm. how it, sh- it should be done mm. do you deal with like a company that sets you up sets up everything for you or how what's the logistic behind that first of all it has to come from you okay to want to be global yeah mm-hmm. uh, if you want to measure success mm-hmm. Of any artist, every artist has their yardsticks of how they measure success. Yeah. For me, I think the more I spread my gospel globally, mm-hmm. then that defines how successful I am. And so I choose to put myself in the tour circuit, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm signed to UTA, which is a very serious touring company. Yeah. They do Burner Boy, mm-hmm. 
and in Europe there's structures for that and I appreciate the structure yeah yeah because it's very yeah, easy for you to plug in mm -hmm. and do your thing and it allows you to build quickly mm -hmm. because when I did Jazz Cafe in April yeah it was April and the tour company selling me out so we should we should announce Coco tomorrow just like that and already yeah. I was feeling like I had cold feet mm -hmm. because like oh my god am I gonna fill it up Mm -hmm. I had a bit of self-doubt there, mm -hmm. imposter syndrome checking in. Yeah, yeah. But just like that, immediately upon announcement, we sold half the venue already. Yeah. And within no time, we'd sold out the place. Yeah. So we have to have the audacity mm -hmm. as East Africans to step into these spaces like we own them. Sure. Like our Nigerian brothers and sisters, like our South African brothers they and sisters. They do have that. They step in a space and they own the space. They own, they show up. Yeah. And our people are waiting for us to show up for them. Mm -hmm. And our people are showing up for us as well. True. There's no sort of soul concert I've played in the UK where I haven't seen uh, Jesse Joyce. Ah, uh, Tupo. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, all I can say to the artists who are in Kenya, I won't even call you in Tanzania and East Africa yeah. in particular, mm -hmm. is guys, you guys are world stage worthy. They are. Yeah. They are, because their music, the melody of East Africa is it's, so it's rich. crazy, man. And also, like, there's so many global uh, sounds mm -hmm. within our culture mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. There's a sound in Tanzania called Singeli. Yes. Ah, you know about Singeli. Yeah, yes. Singeli is, uh, I'm a big fan of Singeli music. But yeah. Singeli sounds like soca. When my wife listened to Singeli for the first time, she was like, is that soca? Yeah, it does. So already, we are global. Mm -hmm. We just need to take ourselves to those spaces where we are celebrated as global artists. We just need to make our, ourselves known out there. And exactly. we're invited It's a large to... conversation, though. You know, it's also a policy conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, our The policies have to favor us. True. To, uh, and favor the music industry in the countries we come from. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. The second thing, I think, would be just the audacity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to develop that audacity. Audacity. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, so I uh, mingle a lot with Kenyans, mm -hmm. right? Ke First of all, Kenyans are doing great things. Yeah. Like, the, they are doing amazing. They're in big organizations. Mm -hmm. They've started their own companies. They're doing great things. I've interviewed a few Kenyans too. And, but with Tanzanians, we have this thing called, um, we, we are shy, we are scared, I have a feeling, when it comes to just being in rooms. I don't know, because... The most audacious artist in the continent. <laughs> that is true. Is Diamond Platinum. I Platinums. don't know where you got that from. <laughs> you know? Yes. And uh, if Diamond reflects the mm. energy of Tanzanian music, mm -hmm. and if what I see in Dar es Salaam mm -hmm. represents the energy of Tanzanian people, mm -hmm. I struggle to see how they would shrink in rooms. No, I think it's just I think it's just Dar es Salaam. It's just the English concept uh, complex. Maybe there is also maybe that. Maybe you know, like I can't be uh, so yeah, exactly. exactly. I know. But, like I've been in rooms where yeah. English is finished because I cannot speak anymore. Ah. Yeah, yeah, you know, I have this rule with my wife though, because my wife is uh, Nigerian. Yes, yeah. And she's been raised here in the UK. Mm -hmm. But me and her can only communicate in English. Yes. And how she got to learn Swahili mm -hmm. is because after 10 p.m., I go back to factory research. Yeah, you reset. I can't talk English at night. No, we can't. No. So, I switch to Swahili. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Nah, it's and I'm so proud of us. Like, the other day we walked into a store. I think it was Uniqlo here in London. Mm -hmm. And we were gossiping about some people who are next to us in, in Swahili. Swahili. And that's a win for my marriage. You know? Yeah. 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 I love that. Love that. Honestly. So, um... November is Mental um, Health Month, mm. so particularly promoting men's mental health, yeah. right? How do you deal with negative comments online? I switch off my phone. Just like that. Exactly. It's so easy, guys. Yeah. Switch off your phone. Don't read comments. But, but if it's just one, on your face, how do one, you avoid it? You can have t 100 great comments. Mm -hmm. And then the one idiot mm -hmm. who gives you a bad comment can ruin and True. poison mm -hmm. the 100 great guys mm -hmm. who have told you they love you or, or yeah. appreciated your craft. And I think we need to have the power, first of all, to switch off from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, social media and can second, be very... Yeah, and second, also, as an artist, you need to be able to decipher if this comment is constructive criticism 
or if it's just hate. Mm-hmm. If it's just hate, I think also with time in your career, you stop feeling. You get, you get, so you get used. You to get it. used to it. Yeah, easy. Uh, if it's constructive, and you're on the wrong, then you learn, you adopt, and you move. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing is, besides like consistent um, breaks from social media, because I feel like social media is where all yeah our mental health. Issues start. It is, yeah. Social media has started structuring how we behave in society. Everything. Yeah. How we behave, how we, what we consume, how everything. our consumption trends. Everything. Where we travel to, uh-huh. everything. It's so we need to media. be able to unplug. Mm-hmm. Second, I think we need to talk about our issues. There have to be spaces for this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm a big champion for people getting counseling. Mm-hmm. I'm a big champion for people. I have a life coach. Mm-hmm. That's that's it. Really important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I everything that my life coach and I have set out to achieve, mm-hmm. emotionally, physically, has come to pass mm-hmm. because I'm putting in the effort. So I think a lot of more more men because women women talk. Yeah. More men need to really put themselves out there and speak about their emotions, speak about how they feel. And adopting also other like known methods of mm-hmm. uh, boosting your energy. Yeah, exercise is one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, meditation is another one. Yeah, and listening to music is another one. Mm-hmm. What you listen to, what you consume, what you eat, true, is also yeah. another one. You know, the food you eat also affects your mental psyche. Mm-hmm. So I think because we have so much knowledge on how to maneuver life mm-hmm. than our parents did. Yeah. I think it's important that we implement. So how do you keep up with uh, um, exercising when you're traveling? How do you keep up with that? I, I woke up this morning and I worked out. Okay. And I came here. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a part of my life. When I don't work out, actually, what you should be asking is, how do I keep up when I don't work out? Okay. And mm-hmm. when I don't work out, it affects my mood. So it's already like, ingrained within your routine. Super ingrained in my routine. Yeah. And I've been working out for the last 20 years. Okay. Yeah. Like that's most of my life. Mm-hmm. So I think people should really adopt exercise. Yeah, I, no, exercising is really good. Um, One thing I realized though, I don't do enough. I don't walk enough, man. And when I'm in London, I walk. <laughs> <laughs> we do walk here. Yeah, and I appreciate that about London. We I tend to walk I, fast because we walk really fast. Everybody walks fast. Everybody's in a hurry. But... I just I appreciate walking in a place where nobody knows me, nobody cares. Like I walked, I went to a mall yesterday. I walked until I was tired. Yeah. And I slept like a baby all night because of the walk. Yes. Yeah. Because of the work that you did. I know. Okay. So talking about walks, you've decided to take a solo walk. Yeah. Which is a solo career. Um, what excites you about this journey that you've started? Um, with the solo projects that you're currently doing. I'm excited to know who I really am. Mm-hmm. Uh, because when I work on when I work on music, it reveals to me who I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say my first solo album revealed much. My first solo tour revealed much, mm-hmm. but I'm just getting my rhythm now. I remember uh, you brought your mother on stage. Yeah. That was a very beautiful. Where moment. was that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you did. Wine. Yes, I did bring my mother on stage. Yeah, you did. I that saw was my that. first big solo show. As yes, well. yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh, yeah. that is so beautiful. Like everyone. Like, my wife surprised me. She, my, you know, yes, my mother yes. lives in the village. Yes, so yeah, I saw I looked that. Behind yeah. and my mom was there. And I was like, oh my god. You know, she, that was a crippling moment for me. Yeah, I love. I would have. I cried. Maybe I cried because mm-hmm. I'm a gangster. Yeah. I can't really say I cried. Eh? <laughs> no, but yeah. I, it was a beautiful moment. Yeah, and so many and people I can't wait to do that. this next chapter mm-hmm. to reveal to me things about myself, and maybe, and hopefully, sorry, mm-hmm. in the in the act of me digging deep to find out who I am, mm-hmm. I'll be emancipating a lot more people mm-hmm. who I come into contact with the art. Yeah. Yes. Now you've well, you've worked with so many big stars, Ira Star. Yeah. You know, then we have DJ Edu. I love that song. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's an anthem right there. Like, love it so much. So do you have any upcoming projects that you could share with us? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually working on my next album now. Okay. That's why I'm so we should expect it. something. Yeah, I haven't figured out the name for the album. Mm-hmm. But I've been putting down a, bit, a lot of uh, r- r- records. I've been writing. Mm-hmm. And um, people should really expect that next project. 
mm-hmm. very soon. Very soon. Yeah. Ah, now we're no, we're 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 waiting. Okay. Because uh, yeah. uh, there's a song that you also you were featured in, um, "Extra Pressure." Ah. Oh. Extra pressure, pressure baby, baby, when you're my home for. Oh. You know the funny thing about extra pressure <laughs> is that it was meant to be in my previous album. It, okay, <laughs> is it that? That's a banger, I right there. When I played it for, when I played it for my wife, yes. she wasn't excited. Come on. And then really? I removed it because <laughs> she's the only girl I'm trying to impress. Of course, definitely, and, yeah. And then Ben Soul put it in his album, mm-hmm. and it turned out to be. The savior of my year, man. To be honest, that song has been a blessing it's a in my life. Uh, it really picked up in Tanzania. It did. And I was like, Wabongo, me naimba nyimbo za kiswahili kila saa, amski. Hapa saa naimba kizungu, tumerukia. Hapu, we don't even understand. I was like, Leo. To a lot of his food, tuna? Tumezama umu ndani. Anyway, Wabongo wamezama umu ndani. Tanzania has really pushed extra pressure, but yeah. shout out to my TikTok family in Kenya. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there was a dance to it. Yeah, there was a dance to it and everything. I'm embracing also the new, uh, the new models of music marketing. Yes. And I'm on TikTok and I'm dancing with the, the kids there and, you know, yeah. doing stuff. So. Yeah, no, that's the way forward. It is. Yeah, that's it the is. way forward. You know, yeah. get more people to see you on, on there. No, that's really good. So, um, in this segment, I n- normally read out a question, okay? But today, we do not have a question, okay? Mm-hmm. However, I just want you to give out one piece of advice that you have to any young artist who who's looking at you and saying, I aspire to be like Vianne, okay? I want to get there. I want to be like like what he's currently achieving, what he's mm. doing. How How can they do it? The first thing I'd say to you is you can't be like BN, it's impossible. Mm-hmm. You can but be that better. That is true. Mm-hmm. You can be better. Mm-hmm. You can be bigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and BN has done BN so that you can be able to have a more successful career. Mm-hmm. Mirror my success, mm-hmm. learn from my mistakes. Mm-hmm. And another a piece of advice I would give is put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Get out and go. Get out and go. Go sing in that church. Yeah. Go to the studio. Go put out that song that you have in your phone that you think, uh, put it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I would be very, you know, the, someone said to me one day that the best songs in the world are in the grave. Yes. Because a lot Sad of people are too scared mm-hmm. to put themselves out there. Yeah. So empty yourself. Mm-hmm. As an artist, empty yourself. Put out as much music as possible. All the artists in the world who are very prolific have put out a ton of art. Mm -hmm. And the cream will rise to the top. Mm -hmm. So the great songs will be celebrated. And what? If a song doesn't work, no one is coming to beat you. No one. Yeah, that is true. No one will tell you, oh, no one is coming to beat you. It's just a song that didn't work. Mm -hmm. Move on. Learn. And quickly. And then finally, adopt or die. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, adopt, adopt or, or die. die. Yes. The TikTok in Mekuja, yeah, dance called TikTok. I would dance called TikTok, yeah, with a kufa. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. There will be people dancing and though. will yeah. dance. And you'll be like, oh, your mama say, I can sing better than them. You can sing better than them. But, the, the, you know, you have to follow the trends that are happening. Not follow all the time. Yeah. But integrate. Yeah, what works for you. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. So you 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 said that you um you sang in a choir. I did. Okay. I Should did. we expect a gospel Album one day or a gospel song here and there. I have a lot of respect yeah. for Christianity, mm-hmm. for Islam, mm-hmm. for religion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did do gospel. Kuliko Jana was yeah, it, 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 it was gospel, yeah. right? And, yeah. it's, and it's a reflection of how I've been raised. Yeah. But I think it's time for me to emancipate African people yeah. using their culture and not religion anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Religion is a beautiful thing because... The teachings of Christianity, the teachings of Islam, mm-hmm. are solid teachings. If yeah. you follow those books and the Bible and the Quran, you True. will live a long, prosperous li- yeah. life. But I wonder, our ancestors were not stupid. Mm-hmm. So right now, also in my next album, I'm digging deeper to emancipate my people mm-hmm. through our culture and through our art. So the African culture is shaping your music and your style. Yeah, because previously, can I be honest with you? I don't think I've ever gone deep Yeah. on... on African culture in my music. Yeah. My music is innately African because I'm African. Yeah. And when I sing it, it'll sound African. Yeah. But I've always been trying to fit in the world. I've always been trying to be understood. Mm-hmm. And I'm just in a point in my career now where I don't have to sing in English to be understood. 
Mm-hmm. And um, I've learned how to communicate my emotions, mm-hmm. how to convey my emotions uh, in a way that is global, palatable globally. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm really digging deep in my culture, and in me doing that, a lot of a lot more people will be emancipated. Yeah. Young African artists should do what Rema did and just go yeah. back to their culture. Yeah. Yeah. That's the side we need to show the world and not be super whitewashed to try and fit in. Yeah, no, there. That's the thing. You know, it's the fit in culture. Maybe mm. if I do as how they're doing it, it would work. Mm-hmm. But there's so many um, rich voices that haven't been heard. Um, from Africa, yeah, instruments. Yeah, the instruments you know the too. instruments, and especially East Africa. We haven't really sold. Mm-hmm. We we have we are great at copying. Yeah, but yeah, for that's us true. to get our sound right, mm-hmm. we need to go to the roots. Mm-hmm. So I'm going there, yeah. and anyone who's coming with me, we'll see. Yeah, they're yeah. together with you. Exactly. So talking about um, performances and stage presence, because you can command a stage. I've been to your shows. Aww. Like the command is there. Like we we expect a show, we get a show. Mm. Okay, guys, the 1st of November, Coco, remember, we're expecting a show, sold out show, show sold out venue. Like we're outside. <laughs> getting west we're outside with BN. So where does that confidence come from? Where do you manifest it from? Do you have any ritual that you have before you go on stage? I think for any artist, confidence comes from practice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Practice makes permanent. Yeah. So the more I practice, the more confident I get. Yeah. And by the time I'm getting on stage now, I've, you know, I've been singing for, I'm 36 now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been singing since I was five. Yeah. All, all your life. So <laughs> I have 30 years experience. <laughs> In just <laughs> performing, and I love it. Mm-hmm. I love being in front of audiences and making people feel happy. Mm-hmm. I would do it for free. Yeah, wow. It just it it, it just pays me, and I'm like, wow, it's, it's paying me. Okay, you guys want to pay? Yeah, sure, man. I, I would do it for free. Are any of your parents musicians? None. None. So None. when so when you said, "Mom, this is what I want to do," okay, as I grew up in an African family, okay, mm. they didn't even want me to do journalism. Wow, that's why I had to leave journalism, and now I'm doing what I love, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So how did you approach it with when you had that talk with them? I didn't have a talk with my parents. Okay, so you I just, just went and did. You just went and did it. Uh, when I when I finished high school, yeah. my parents lived in London, mm-hmm. and I was at home in Kenya. And I had the freedom, at least, to start pursuing my career. And I thank I thank God for that because if I lived with my parents, mm-hmm. I don't know what the turnout would have been. Mm-hmm. Uh, my parents are definitely academics and would want me to follow that that lane. Yeah. But I think I've made them proud. Like my, I was in my, uh, I was in Kakamega in the weekend before mm-hmm. I came here. I went to see my parents in the village. Yeah. And I see what me being a musician has done for them. Mm-hmm. I have other siblings who are not musicians, and they have made my parents proud too. Mm-hmm. But you know, my dad is never gonna go to a bar and someone calls him yeah. because oh, your son is a lawyer. I mean, my brother is a lawyer mm-hmm. and a damn good lawyer at it, you know. Yeah. But uh, Lord, you can be a famous lawyer, yeah. But it's sexier to be a famous musician. Ah, yeah. yeah. So I think <laughs> in the flip side, over time, my mm-hmm. parents have really loved my craft yeah. and what it's done and the pride it brings to them. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. So and also because growing up, I was problematic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so a problematic child. Not that problem. I wasn't that bad. Yeah. I was just a kid who didn't fit in oh, okay. conventional systems. In that systems. sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to bring them pride, to provide for them. Yeah. Well, you you turned out really them. good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, they're really proud of you. Um, You know, your mom was so happy on stage. Uh, um, that's, my, that's my girl. Uh, yeah. So when um all is said and done, what legacy would you want to leave within the African music, the African industry, the African mm. music industry? Uh, I, I'm I'm devoting myself to create systems, okay, okay. and to build a path mm-hmm. that people can follow. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, uh, it won't be long before another East African act comes and does the O2 and yeah. does Coco. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so living a f- because uh, blueprint. I've already done that. I've shown the kids it's possible. Yeah. Back home, Saudi Soul has a record label. Mm-hmm. Saudi Soul has a festival. Yeah. Saudi Soul has introduced publishing, mm-hmm. music publishing to Kenyan music. We have a publishing house. Mm-hmm. Uh, and many other things. We have a ticketing company. Yeah. And all of these things are to service the music industry. The music industry. Yeah. And with time, these things will grow mm-hmm. and 
go throughout the continent. So my dream is to leave a legacy of systems yeah. and fantastic art. Like if anybody ever goes through my catalog, they're like, wow, this guy did sing mm-hmm. prolific uh, music that made sense to the times and was timeless. Yeah, yeah, that's what we are missing right now in the music industry. Let me just be really honest mm. with you. That timeless music is not there anymore. It's like a bang. I think it's your there. We are, we are, we are, it's there. We just don't want to listen to timeless music. <sighs> is, is it really though, Bien? It is. I can give you examples of timeless music. Okay, except myself and Saudi Soul. Because I, I do oh, no, think... No. For me, for me we, Susanna is a timeless song. Timeless. I would listen to Susanna yeah. when I'm 60 years old. Exactly, exactly. And many other songs and in yeah. our catalog. Like, you know... Uh, Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good one too. Yeah. You know, and all of those songs I wrote years that before even I recorded them. Even mm-hmm. so in my album, uh, Alusawa, You Topless, yes. all the songs are very timeless. If you listen to them five years from now, they will speak to you. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel the same when I listen to a lot of Tanzanian music. Yeah. Yeah, because my biggest inspiration is uh, Mbaraka Yeah. Mm-hmm. who is a prolific Tanzanian musician who yeah. sang songs in the... 70s yeah. that are making sense to me now. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So that's that's the sound. Yeah, the sound, the lyrics. Yeah, the, the poetry. Lyrics itself. Yeah. So for me, I would love to make a time lived a timeless catalog. I would love to leave a legacy of uh, structure, mm-hmm. and I'm also a board member in the music copyright bodies at home. Mm-hmm. And with that, we are advocating for policy change mm-hmm. so that musicians can earn from their art in proper systemic ways. Mm. Yeah. Oh, no, that's that's very good and very positive. So before we go. We're going. Yeah, yeah, we're going. Ah, uh, I was just <laughs> saying have fun. A, we're having a very uh, good conversation. But before we go, uh, what's one thing that you want to tell your, um, your fans, your followers, mm. our neighbors, that's how we call them here? Yeah, my neighbors. Oh, th- Dear neighbors, uh-huh. I want to say thank you mm-hmm. for believing in me to be the bearer of this gift. First of all, I want to thank God for believing in me to yes. be the vessel and the bearer of this gift. Delivering it to us. The yeah, world. and yes. giving me this gift mm-hmm. because I cherish it, I honor it, I work on it every day. Mm-hmm. I give it my all. Mm-hmm. I want to thank the fans for trusting in me. Yeah. Yeah. To do the things I do for always showing up for me. You people don't understand how it feels to have a sold out show. Mm-hmm. It's like opening a, sh- a shop and people buy everything. Yeah. Do you understand do, how like, crazy that is? Everything is gone. <laughs> Every, everything is. So people come there and they buy everything. Yeah. They don't leave anything on the, on the shelf. Mm-hmm. It is such a blessing. I'm blessed to have you guys mm-hmm. beyond. And I'll keep on giving you That's my best. That is really good to hear. Yeah. Tanzanians and Kenya, right? Kenyans, mm. right? We have this thing where some of the Kenyans claim that Mount Kilimanjaro is in Kenya. Mm. So I want you to look at the camera and say, where is Mount Kilimanjaro? Located? Ladies and gentlemen, Mount Kilimanjaro originally was in Kenya. Not originally. <laughs> before it was given as a gift. By the colonial masters uh-huh. to Tanzania. Ah. But have you seen where the border is? I've seen. Can we talk about where the border is? So where is Kilimanjaro? Is it in Kenya or is it in Tanzania? Which side of the mountain? Si Kenya is huko. <laughs> then they took it all of it. Hasa wakamua kuchora hizo. And can I be honest with you, wabongo? Tusikuwe hawa watu because Tanzania na Kenya ni watu moja. We're the same people. True, we yeah. are. Yeah, so we're just divided by colonial borders. True, we have the but same food. Same food, same, same people, people, same everything. everything. Yeah, my brother is married to a Tanzanian woman. Is it? Yes, in Moshi. Yeah. Nenda Moshi na kunyo mtori na jienjoy uko Moshi mbaa sana maze. So, yani, kenye neza wambia tu ni, Kilimanjaro, tumewachia. Okay, asante sana. Tumewachia, atutaki hizo vita. Asante sana. Lake Victoria, mutuachie. Wakati Lake Victoria, the biggest part is in Tanzania. <laughs> Lake Victoria, the biggest part is in Tanzania? Yes. yes. Okay, but you know, in Kenya, mm-hmm. we have the original name of Lake Victoria. That, yeah. Kabla wa koloni wakuja wa ite Lake Victoria, ilikuwa ito na mlolwe. Ah. Unona? Uh-huh. Kwa usini kukoshe wetu shepea jina, unona? Then, ikachukuliwa na wakoloni. Ikachukuliwa na wakoloni, maze. Wakaipatio jina Lake Victoria. 
Eh mm. kitu ambacho ningependa tuungane kufanya ni kubadilisha hizo majina za kikoloni ambazo tulipewa. Oh, get, going back to the original going back to the original names yeah. of the things that meant things to us. I'm sure people who lived around Kilimanjaro had a name for the mountain. It's, it's Mount Kilimanjaro. Eh? Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro. Yeah. Ina maanisha? So like meaning that um so it's in Kilima. Chak- Kilimanjaro. It's like the mountain of something. Wow. Yeah. But I think the pronunciation throughout yeah, yeah, yeah. the Nika Kilimanjaro. Hey, manze. So Kilimanjaro okay, I learn new things every day. <laughs> Yeah. Mm, so that's what that's how I feel uh, about Tanzanian Kenyan Tanzanian music beef politics. Uh-huh. Unajua tuna wa Kenya wa Tanzania wanasema wao wa Kenya mjui mziki. Wa Kenya <laughs> lakini wa Kenya tunapenda mziki ya Tanzania. Uh, yeah. Tunapenda bongo flavor sana. Yeah. And yeah. Th- there was a ra- there was a raise of um lo- loving TID songs. Sana. TID TID no uh, TID na Mr. Nice. Yeah. Yo sanio kizazi kipi ambao wa kizazi kipi wakati huo ambao wali, wali bring bongo flavor back to yeah. to Kenya. But you know Tanzanians have been music has been big in Kenya since the 70s. Akina Mbaraka Mwishe walikuwa wameshika Kenya. Yeah. Mbaraka Mwishe alifariki Mombasa. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So uh we have always been neighbors. Ah uh, sitawahi kubali kwamba Tanzania ni wanoma mziki kutuliko. Ah sisi kubali. Sisi kubali. Sisi kubali. Manake mimi mwenyewe I'm the best Tanzanian artist. I know. <laughs> I'm the best at anything you know. Wasafi ni watu wangu. Yeah. Angalia yeah, kwenye diamond I'm a build over time. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. yeah. So we have a lot to learn from each other as neighbors. That it's great to see. It's yes. really great to see that the music from East Africa reaching these sides. Mm. Sana. Like when you listen to But what I think is a problem actually mm-hmm. that we need to address. Mm-hmm. We do not collaborate enough. Oh, do you think it's because of time? It's not because of time. You make time for things that matter. That is true. That is very fair. Yeah. That's a very I have a question. Thing to say. How big is the O2? The big O2? 20,000 people? Yeah, this one here? Yeah. yeah. It's that it's that big. It's I massive. have a question. Mm-hmm. Can Diamond do the O2 by himself? He can. Uh I doubt. I'm sure but, he can. But But if he has opening acts, yes. No, he can. But If Diamond and Saudi Soul come together, mm-hmm. and Bruce Melody from Rwanda, mm-hmm. and then there's Baraka from Uganda. Joshua Baraka from Uganda. Yeah. We can fill up the O2. That is what Nigerians have done. Yeah. The first time Nigerians filled up the O2, it wasn't a solo act. Mm-hmm. It was a one African music fest, different kinds of festivals that brought artists together, and then our people understood. the culture of going to a venue like the O2 our people knew that we were worthy mm-hmm. our people i mean africans we knew that we were worthy like enough for that space but do you think it's i'm because... calling out <laughs> to my brother diamond yes to my friends who are tanzanian musicians mm-hmm. to watch it kosa kuungana eh tuungane let's collaborate okay. tufanye ma songs pamoja let's make art together mm-hmm. let's work together to conquer the world together because utengano dhaifu umoja ni nguvu that's what that's what they say yeah but do you think um singing in swahili kind of puts puts us a bit back compared to the nigerian artists give artist? me give me my piano songs that you know that are in english oh yeah that, that is actually true. oh even asake you know say even asake yeah, asake it, asake's new album is 70% in yoruba yeah Oh, Yoruba. Yeah. That's true. And I, I I I could I could say this with all my heart that I think Swahili is our much sexier language. Definitely. I yeah. totally agree. Yes. Yeah, any apple we will fight. Yeah. <laughs> so so we really shouldn't be talking about uh language here. Mm-hmm. We should be talking about the quality of the sonic expression. Mm-hmm. We should be talking about how culturally rooted it is because Ashake is deep Yoruba man if you're from the village there in uh, Ogun state mm-hmm. you you see the nuances of uh, the depth and the layers mm-hmm. of Yorubaness in his music i don't see that in tanzanian music i don't see no 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 swahili ndio yeah. na kumekuwa na moments yeah kwenye culturally nimeona hey, 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 this is great yeah but i i think we need to really go deeper in our in our culture and collaborate mm-hmm. to bring out the best of what the East African sound is like. I cannot imagine a show at the O2 with East African artists. That is promoted for six months. Yes. To make sure everybody gets their ticket. Mm-hmm. Everybody 
and their auntie in London must come for that show. They will. They, they will. Because like, so and it's not only East Africans who will come. Zimbabweans love our music. Everyone. Uh, Nigerians. Yesterday Everyone. I was at the mall. I took a picture with a Nigerian lady. Yeah. She Everyone was like, oh, I came for your show at the Jazz Cafe many years ago. Uh, other people come for our music. Are going to come for our music. It's true. Because like I'm in a uh, Telegram group with like fellow Tanzanians. Mm. And there's like 10,000 of us in there. Wow. In that one group. Wow. So it's. Like there is definitely yeah. a market. There's a hundred thousand Kenyans in the UK. Yeah, yeah. See, so there's definitely a market. Yeah. We could the O2 could be filled in no time. We're not complete. But we have refused yeah. to unite. No, it will happen. It, it won't happen, it guys. It will happen we one day. We have to be deliberate. Yes, that is. Nigerians true. knew it would happen for them one day, mm -hmm. but they were deliberate. They made the steps. So someone has to go out there and dare to put this together. Not someone. The artists have to want it for mm -hmm. themselves. Because it's a venture like any other that yeah, in the a, beginning we need to give more than we are getting. Yeah. But once we open that door, it's open forever. That is true. Yeah, that is true. And like look at look at the festivals. Because like, of Banner Boy, Rema is without doing the O2. Yeah. Uh, because of, of, of WizKid doing three nights at the O2, mm -hmm. someone else will come and do the O2 like it's nothing. It's yeah. not a thing anymore. Because Banner Boy is doing a stadium, any African artist in this country in this country in the UK right now yeah. can do a stadium. True. We've seen it's possible. But for East Africa, our validation will not come from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Our validation will not come from the West. It has to come from us. Yeah. Mm. Now, I totally agree with you. Uh, I'd love to see that. I Yo, would really we will live to, to see, see it. That. Yeah, we will. To see. We'll live to see that. Yeah. yeah. So, neighbors, thank you so much for staying with us until the end of the podcast. We have heard. So, what BN is here for, okay? One reminder, Friday, the 1st of November, Coco. Coco is in Camden High Street. See you there. Let's go party. Let's go celebrate um, African music and let's go have a good time. There's also an after party. Is it sold yeah, out? It's sold out as well, yeah. It's already sold out. Every, this, Maybe, everything is sold, sold out. out. Yeah. Even, yeah. In fact, we're just telling you this as a formality so that you don't feel like we didn't invite yeah. you. Yeah. We are sold out. Yeah, everything is sold capacity. out. Capacity. Capacity. So, um, well... You know, they just have to follow you on social medias and see how um, everyone turns up there because we're, we're going to be turning up and, crazy. and showing face. Yes. Bien, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Well, thank you. It was definitely a pleasure to have you today and have a conversation with you. Speak about the African music, the future of music in Africa. It was such a blessing. I learned new things today. So mm. thank you so much for um, for being here today. Thank you for having me, man. Neighbors. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs good neighbors. Yay! With a little understanding. Uh -huh. That's it, man. Yeah, we got it. Guys, remember to subscribe, follow, share with your friends and everyone. Until next time, I'm your host, JC Joyce. Bye. <laughs>